With Expedition Drenched, we have been lucky enough to explore stunning and untouched places on land as well as underwater. For me, a whole new world started by getting certified by Nate as a diver. Diving in all those beautiful places have been so much fun, and I would love to keep sharing those adventures with other people. However, as most of us are aware of our oceans being polluted, we might not be aware of the destruction that the crown of thorn starfish can occur to the corals. Today, I am proud to tell you more about this type of starfish and show you how we can fight against it. In Port Havana in Vanuatu, we contacted Peter, who does an amazing job to remove the crown of thorns before they get to the healthy reef systems that he wants to share with snorkelers or scuba divers. This is the story of a sailboat named Sylvia and the ragtag crew that call her home. Join us each week as we explore our planet both above and below the surface and find out what it's really like to live a life at sea. This is Expedition Drenched. Previously on Expedition Drenched, we leave our beautiful anchorage in Tana Island and sail towards Port Vila with our cute little baby pig. Today we're on a fun adventure and we are at war against the crown of thorns, which I've known about for a while, but I've really never really known what to do about it. And I've really never met anybody that is doing about it until today. So I want to introduce my new friend, Peter. Thank you, Nate, and thank you for coming out and helping us with the crown of thorn problem. She's a type of starfish, but it's a starfish with a whole lot of spikes off the top. An amazing critter, really. Like, you have dinner plate size body with 17 legs, roughly. Spikes all across the top, all, all poison tipped. Underneath, you have all these little suction pad feet, so they can use their big legs for crossing from one reef to another. And then they use the little suction pad feet to climb up onto the top of the reefs where some of the better corals are. They're getting more sunlight, more tasty to them. And they'll extrude their stomach. They'll sit on, a, say, a plate coral or underneath the plate coral, extrude their stomach down onto the plates and their digestive enzymes dissolve the polyps in their little holes and they suck it up into their body and they can slowly move across the plate, you end up with a skeleton, just a white skeleton, right. just leaves two green. Unfortunately, we talk about coral reef destruction on a grand scale by these plagues of crown of thorns. Here are some pictures from Peter, who took out or injected over 600 crown of thorns in a one hour session with some other divers. As you can see, they come in all sizes. The oceans are under enough destructive pressures already, from cyclones, coral bleaching events and plastic. Mankind can't control natural events, but we can do something about crown of thorn plagues. To give you an idea, each night the nocturnal crown of thorn can eat its own body area and coral and they can grow up to a meter in diameter. That means that on average an individual starfish can consume up to 13 square meters of living coral reef per year. We should be grateful to have people such as Peter that is culling as many crown of thorns as possible to minimize the coral reef destruction that is occurring right now. Otherwise, there will be no coral left in his beautiful dive sites. So at the moment we're using uh, the hook and bag method and we're also using the injection of uh, vinegar and also mox bile. It's the uh, gold bladder fluid from oxen, which is a very effective uh, toxin. First time with aluminium. <laughs> <laughs> She's only dove with our little stubby takes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Blowing people's minds. Cool. You probably have like 25 dyes by now too. Yeah. Awesome. So the 
this is oxbile? This is oxbile, yes. Is it, it's a kind of acid, or...? No, if we're using vinegar in one of these, mm -hmm. it does change their pH level. This one changes their molecular structure. Basically, you fall apart. <laughs> yeah. All the limbs just fall off, everything just... Sounds like some pretty crazy stuff. <laughs> I've been at war with these guys before, but I don't think properly. I've always just been like taking a big boulder and putting them on top. Or if I find a crown of thorns, um, and if I find a triton's trumpet, I'll bring the triton's trumpet to the crown of thorns. I've only actually seen that work like twice. <laughs> so. A long time ago, we don't use that. We use that, get the crown of thorns on the rib, just catch them, and we fill it inside the bag. When it's full, the bag is full, then we end up with the bone. What do you prefer? With the injection or with this? Peter reckon that injection is killing, so that's okay. That make it a lot more easier. When you fill up on the back, sometimes you be, you be careful. Like if you get stung, it's poison, huh? Yeah, yeah it hurts. Away very quickly, Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what the movie Ghostbusters is? You're gonna be a Ghostbuster. Yeah. Uh, a little Ghostbuster backpack sucking up the bad guys. <laughs> Crown of thorns rolled up like balls sitting on the bottom. And you've got to be fairly quick. You come in and inject it with this arm, inject it in this arm. It's just a matter of squeezing the, the gun like that, right? So the fluid should be coming down now. Oh, here we are. So we've had an outbreak here in Vanuatu since 1990. We try to find the areas where there's a major aggregation or outbreak of the crown of thorn to maximize the effort of actually pulling them out of the water or injecting them. Most of us know how beautiful corals are, but do we also realize the importance of it? Corals are a mixture of plant, animal and stone. They are unique among all living things and known as the rainforests of the sea. Apart from their beauty and vibrant colors, they are extremely important, both ecologically and economically. The coral systems are a source of food for millions. They provide habitats and shelter for many marine organisms. They protect coastlines from the damaging effects of wave action and tropical storms. They are a source of new medicines and they provide jobs and income to local economies from fishing, recreation and tourism. Land-based problems of pollution may take generations to solve, but regular crown of thorns and seaweed removal may be the most effective way to help corals survive and thrive, even in a nutrient-enriched environment. If we hit them hard, like take out hundreds, they put out pheromones in the water that alert other ones, look, beware, this is not a good area to come. Nice coral, but there's some nasty humans around here. <laughs> Peter's trying, here. They were trying to wipe us out. <laughs> Peter found us. <laughs> yeah. Today, we hit a mother load of uh, crown of thorns. We probably took out about over 200, I'd say. We'll keep doing this. It's not too hard to fit in two dives, but we're not getting so many on snorkel. We're needing scuba divers to actually get them and tell them. There are going to be some reefs left at the end of it all, but we need to be protecting more reefs. Ooh. A 
I got stung by one of the one of thorns and it actually hurt. Put a bit of heat on hot water and that, that'll help uh, get rid of the uh, toxin. Well, I think I deserved that after killing them. <laughs> How was it? How did you like it? It was awesome, actually. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was the first time I was like working on the water and doing stuff instead of enjoying the dive. It was pretty fun. Right, other than murdering most fowl, what else did you see on that dive? I saw pretty cool nudie branches, some I've never seen before. Very small, black with spotted like silver spot, it had a tail like split tail. It was very cool. Look at this face. <laughs> this has got the face of murder all over it. If I ever wanted, I'm gonna put a wanted poster right around this. Murder. <laughs> I mean, it went quite fast. Nate was really good in finding them, so I just followed them and then... I still say I'm a newbie in diving, but I think now I'm quite getting more experience. <laughs> yeah. It was cool to do stuff on the water and to just, I don't know, to be able to do something to help the coral to survive. On my website uh, for Sail Away Cruise, we do have uh, information how people can get in touch and they can volunteer if they like. Come up here, we'll show them some good dive sites and show them some uh, areas where we need help in actually culling the crown of thorns. Anyway, we'll keep doing it for as long as we have to, <laughs> till we get rid of the ball. I hope it's encouraging to uh, others to also do their part. You run a tourist operation or you just love the ocean in general or you love scuba diving and you want it to be here for your children and you want beautiful reefs, uh, maybe get involved or at least pass on knowledge and allow your dive guides to collect them or inject them as well. Well, thank you so much for inviting us out and uh, we had a heck of a good time and stone cone killers and we'll go pass the word along so okay. thank you and if you so, want to find out more make... information check out peter's website right below and uh give him a shout out and support where you can so thank you See all the dried up dead ones from before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's how they let them know. Don't tell all your friends never come back. You should come back around here. This is our turf. Cemetery. How was your day, guys? It was good. Tiring. Yeah. We killed close to 300 crown of thorns today. Good yeah. job. Yeah. So, hard work, hard work but I feel good about it and there was way more than I ever could have thought that there would have been. You'd see one and then you're like, oh, okay, I got one. And then you realize that around that one, there was like 10 more hiding like all underneath it. And there was times where I would grab the hook and pull one out and then it would be on top of another one and then on top of another one. And there was one hole in particular where there was like six to eight in the hole. You did a good job as well. You had 51. Yeah. That's pretty cool, you pretty can be proud. proud of that. Yes, I am. It's a lot of teardrops to fit on that pretty face of yours. One, do oh, 51 teardrops. <laughs> so gangster, so gangster. Join us next time as we say goodbye to Molly and Phil. I'll be waving Sylvia off as she sails into the horizon without me. And as we continue our sail 65 miles further towards Epi. Let's go sailing! Show you something! Stop. 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 <laughs> Bravo! We have a little pig on our boat. It's peanuts. True, we do. We do. Oh, peanuts. Yeah, we have a little pig that's big on our boat. Look at his nice face. Yeah, but uh, what do you put it in? Just walk around.
stuff inside of that one. It's a baby thing. It's like this thing. <laughs> it's a chief fry. Say it again, please. No, no, no. Please. So I got this tattoo and then we watched Moana like a week later and I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> now you know, yeah. Now, you want now I'm on. <laughs> yeah, so this guy is too shy to tell the camera, but he just, his, his name is Nate. And he just told our Nate. Nasty Nate. Nasty Nate. That I'm Moana's grandma. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Moana's great great grandfather. He's brown. <laughs> every move I make, every path I take, sailing down the street, merrily, 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 up and down the street. How much cost your daughter? How much? Uh, three pig. No, three pig. Two sacks. Two pig. Ha 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 